Currently, our annualized dividend yield is in excess of 8%. That, coupled with our growth rate, which in terms of production per share has a, been compounding at about 8% over the long term, that combination of yield that co uh, with growth, we think, is quite outsized. So sometimes we get the question, is, is that a dividend that is likely to be cut? Uh, let's just look at some statistics on how we cover that dividend. At $40 WTI, we cover the cash dividend and we cover our capex that's required to stay flat at last year's production levels. At a little bit over $50 WTI oil price, we cover our growth capex as well. Today the WTI price is about $10 above that. It's in the uh, low 60s. So there is, in our view, absolutely no reason to entertain uh, any reduction in the dividend. Let's think about this long-term record that we have uh, in paying a dividend. We've made monthly uh, payments since 2003. We've increased the dividend four times. We've never cut the dividend. And um, it does not seem to me that there is any reason at all that we would uh, entertain a dividend cut when we're covering, uh, you know, stay flat capex and the dividend by over $20 a barrel at, uh, at present. Now, if we ever got into a really pronounced and protracted decline in commodity prices, what we would do is just reduce, reduce that growth capex. We're going to protect the balance sheet, we're going to protect the dividend, and after that we worry about growth. At present, with commodity prices where they are, we're generating significant excess cash uh, above and beyond the dividend and our entire CapEx program, including the growth component. ESG and environmental sustainability are absolutely central to our strategy. To be at the top of our game in these areas helps us in so many ways. First of all, operationally it helps us. It helps us be a more efficient and less wasteful producer. Secondly, it keeps us on our uh, trying to move ahead all the time, trying to improve all the time, because we know this is an area that the oil and gas industry is seeking to improve in. We believe very much that we're the leader today and we want to stay ahead. It forces us to continuous improvement in our operations. And then finally, we think it helps in the capital markets we uh, believe that there is a growing emphasis on ESG and the actively managed funds in general. We know there are specific ESG funds that are being developed and we want to be a part of those. And in general, we think that it may to some degree immunize us if there is a trend toward disinvestment from oil and gas companies. We think we belong in that sustainability universe. Our track record indicates it. And uh, we want to make sure that we capture our share of ESG uh, asset management. Specifically on our record, we have been conducting sustainability projects for over 10 years. For example, in southwest France, at our Parentis oil field, we use recycled energy, recycled heat from our oil and gas operation to heat a series of greenhouses that produce about 5 million uh, overall, the industry there now produces about 5 million kilos of tomatoes a year. We jump-started this industry by providing heat from our operation to the first greenhouse. Uh, that operation has now been expanded. I think overall the industry uh, employs hundreds of people in that area. So it's got an environmental sustainability element as well as an economic sustainable, sustainability element because that tomato industry there ought to be a, a long-term feature of the regional economy. We also heat eco-habitats in southwest France. These are apartments, uh, again, using recycled heat, recycled energy from our uh, oil operation. And in fact, uh, 30 or 40 percent of those apartment units are reserved for social housing. So there's an economic inclusivity element to, to that as well. And we're starting a geothermal project in the Netherlands uh, with the intent of using a well pair from a depleted gas field to provide geothermal energy to another agricultural uh, operation there. Our, our ESG ratings reflect our performance. CDP uh, A, A minus, and A minus list the last three years. Uh, the only Canadian to make that list, and I think one of only about 12 energy companies in the world, uh, rated A in the MSCI, uh, 82nd percentile in Sustainalytics, uh, top quartile in Robico Sam second highest uh, governance rating from the Globe and Mail's board games assessment uh, board practices. 
So we're very, very strong in this, energy, in this area. It's integrated into our operations. It's part of the focus of our leadership. Uh, it is part of the incentive system, in fact, for every employee in the company. Uh, and uh, it's, it's uh, the right thing to do for the long term, and we intend to stay ahead in this area. So in, in summary on this question of sustainability, we know there is an energy transition that we are now in the midst of in the world. We support this transition. We're a part of this energy transition. But the energy transition is going to take decades. And during that time, there are going to be somewhat growing volumes of oil and gas that are consumed and therefore produced, and quite a bit of growth in gas consumption. We think that if you are a concerned in citizen, investor, community, government, you should turn to the best-in-class oil and gas companies during this energy transition if you want to have the biggest impact on carbon performance, on overall environmental performance, and for investors, we uh, believe that it is correlated with uh, total shareholder return as well. Our newest business unit is Central and Eastern Europe, based in Budapest, with another office in Zagreb. So um, this is a very substantial, uh, but uh, over the past few decades, underinvested and undertech basin, kind of the greater Pannonian basin, we would call it, significant producer of gas and actually significant volumes of oil as well. So um, we put together millions of acres of land position uh, in uh, uh, primarily through direct grants from the uh, land concessions from the government. Uh, we have uh, some deals with uh, some of the uh, companies in the area as well. Uh, we will be drilling in all three countries, in Slovakia, Hungary, and Croatia this year. Uh, typically gas prospects, although we do have some, uh, I would say, meaningfully sized oil exploration projects. Uh, a number of these prospects we think are very low risk, and uh, I think it's going to be a good source of production growth for us for the uh, next number of years. Uh, it's an area that I think the industry has neglected, and as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, it's, a, it's a place we think we can you know, use some new seismic technology and uh, other techniques to uh, improve results in this, uh, after there's been this long hiatus in investment in the industries in, in this area. One thing that I think is a, a very unusual attribute of Vermilion is our diversified product mix and project base. Uh, roughly 30% uh, of our cash flow comes from European gas, the other 70% from a combination of Brent and WTI. And it's unusual in an intermediate, especially a North American-based intermediate, to have that kind of diverse product mix. A lot of advantages in our capital markets model of providing growth and income, these commodities don't tend to move up and down in unison, and therefore it imparts greater stability to our cash flow stream. That coupled with very high margins, low financial leverage, and a disciplined hedging program means that we can have uh, what I think is greater stability in our cash flow stream to execute this capital markets model than can a uh, typical uh, independent. Um, in terms of allocating capital, uh, we've got a uh, quite deep project slate available throughout the world. Uh, in fact, if you look at our uh, count of uh, available drilling locations, actually based on independent assessment, it's something on the order of a 20-year pseudo-life uh, to the project inventory. There are, uh, we believe, high return projects in all of these products, in European gas, in Brent, and in WTI. We are cognizant of the commodity environment for each of the products. We will go to those that offer the highest rates of return. Uh, we'll have a small uh, percentage of the budget that is devoted towards strategic development of early stage projects. But in general, we're looking for the very, very highest rate of return projects within that deep project inventory. And that is how we can provide uh, the growth that we do, plus pay the dividend on a minimum amount of CapEx.